Hello all my data people. In today's video we are going to be talking about Power BI field parameters, how they can be used to improve your reports, how to set them up, where and when you might be able to use them. Um, just a full walkthrough on how these field parameters can be used to help you and your data reporting in Power BI. So just giving a quick overview of kind of how or what field parameters are. So within Power BI you have the ability to create field parameters that whenever selected will change the hierarchy of the data that is being used in that visual that contains the field parameter. So let's look at this visual as an example. So currently this visual has a field parameter in its rows. So it's just got one single field. But if we expand the full visual, we can see that there are multiple different fields under this single field. Even though we just have one row in this visual, when we expand the data, we can see that there are multiple different fields under that. And so the way that this works is this is using this field parameter idea that gives us the ability to set up different fields within a single field. And this ordering is how all of those will by default be ordered. Right, so by default, we have this client field on top, then the contact, vacancy, candidate, and employee. But then let's see over here on our field parameter slicer. So we just have a slicer with that, again, that same field parameter in there. If we want to change how this data is displayed, we can simply click on a field within this slicer, and then now this visual only shows the candidate data with all of our other visuals staying the same. It shows our candidate on top, and then if we wanted to show the vacancy under that, we could then click on that vacancy field to then show that same way we clicked on the slicer will then be displayed in our field parameter visual. So it's a very helpful way to show different breakouts of your data without having to use bookmarks or anything like that. Historically, kind of the best way that I would go about doing this switching of the fields for what fields might be on top of a visual would be through bookmarks. So right now, if you're just looking at this, you would have an employee on top, then you click on a different bookmark and it would change your visual to show the different visual with the different hierarchy of your data, right? It's pretty clunky, pretty hard to set up. So what they've done is we can do these field parameters that again, just make it a whole lot easier, right? So if we go from client over to contact and then vacancy and then employee, it still gives us all of our same, all of our same fields just in a different breakout so we can see those values summarized in a different way as opposed to having to use a bunch of different bookmarks to be able to do it. All right, so let's go through how to set this up. So if we start fresh here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding that field parameter. So up on the top ribbon of Power BI, we're going to go to the modeling tab. We're going to click on this new parameter. We're going to click on the drop down and we're going to choose the field parameter. So we're creating a field parameter within the modeling section of the ribbon. So within this parameter field view, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be searching through the different fields that we want to include in this field parameter and just drag and drop, right? So let's go with the fields that we want to start out with are just going to be a bunch of these different name fields. Let's go ahead and click on the candidate name, client name, client contact and employee name. And let's also include the vacancy field as well. All right, so now we've got all of the different fields that we're gonna use. The names we can switch in just a minute, but so right now we're just gonna use these five different fields and we're gonna keep this little box for add slicer to page checked off just for it to pop in onto the page without us needing to do anything. Let's go ahead and rename this to, uh, let's just go testing parameter. And so what's going to happen is we will have that slicer be created. So we have our slicer created and added, and then this is what is created, right? So in our data pane over on the right, we can see that we created a new table within our model. So we've got a new table and it's called what the name that we gave it, right? So it's called the parameter testing, and then the parameter name is parameter testing as well. And then so once you have this parameter testing or parameter field created, this is where you can kind of change some of those names. So let's have this candidate name be candidate. Let's have the client name be client, contact to contact, and employee to employee, and ID, let's go to vacancy. All right, so now we've got all of the different names. Let's go ahead and enter, and then we can see that everything kind of changed in its naming down here as well. And so the next little item to be aware of with these parameter testings is the default version 
default way all of the data will be displayed um, in the hierarchy. So let's go ahead and throw this parameter onto a table visual real quick. So let's just use that same kind of matrix visual that we had on that first example with the same measure that we're using. Not sure where our plus and minuses are. Let's turn those on. All right, there we go. So now with this parameter, we can see that the top level, so this zero level, is going to show us first, right? So we've got that candidate level is the top level. And then underneath that candidate level, one being the client name, if we expand this candidate selection, right underneath it is gonna be the client. Let's make this tabular. And so you can see that right underneath the candidate is the client at step one. And so if we just keep following that through, all of that will go all the way down to the vacancy, right? So let's just fully expand it here so we can see how that hierarchy is built within this parameter. So again, we've got that candidate being the top level, we've got the client coming underneath it at that one position, then contact at two, employee at three, and vacancy D ID at four. And so again, this is just the default way that this parameter will have your data be displayed just by default. So if we wanted to change this up, let's say we wanted to have employee be our default on top, we could make that zero, and then the candidate could be up on where employee was, and then we push enter, then our, again, that default hierarchy will change in the way that we're breaking everything out. So now we have that employee on top being in that zero position, followed by client being at one, then contact being at three, so on and so forth, right? So this numbering is how the default will be arranged. So that default, definitely super important, probably like the most used or biggest use of your data that people might want to slice and dice your data in a hierarchy by, right? So you can keep changing all of that as much as you want for the default. But then the power really comes into play when you start selecting in the slicer what you want to show, right? So that slicer selection is going to be really cool on how it interacts with this parameter because what it does is it will use the, the order that you click on the parameter slicer to essentially change the default ordering. So you can set it to any ordering you want, just that default is just going to be how it's going to, by default, display, right? But if you want it to display in any different way, it just depends on how on your ordering of your clicks on the slicer that you use. So super cool that you can literally just change any type of field, um, field hierarchy into a different hierarchy display just by a simple ordering of your clicks on a slicer. Right, so super powerful, super awesome um, benefit to your reporting that you can add. So now that we've got a basic idea of how to create these field parameters, um, from a setup perspective, let's go through kind of how they might look on a visualization and how they can be used to help improve your reports um, in general. So just using a real world um, kind of report example of how these can be utilized. So let's go ahead and create a different visualization here. that one out of the way, move this one over here, and let's use just a classic bar chart here. Okay, so now that we've got a classic bar chart here, we can again see, let's turn on our titles here. So you can see that right now at the top level, right, so that client level is still our top level. So let's go ahead and remove our parameter. Now we've got, again, back to the default of our employee being on top, right? So that employee is at the zero range of the parameter field. So that is going to be our top level by default. So both visuals right now, the matrix and the bar chart are both showing us the employee on top, again, because both of these fields are using just a single field being that parameter field that we've created, right? So again, if we do kind of the same little um, walkthrough on this visual, it will still just drill through in that same pattern, right? So we still start with that employee. So we filter down to a single employee with our drill through. Then if we keep doing that, we'll still just drilling through, right? So we started on the employee, then we went down into the client, 
we keep drilling through, now we're on the contact, we keep drilling through, now we're on the candidate, we keep drilling through, now we're on the vacancy, right? So all that drill through still, and all that hierarchy levels still stay true within all of the different visual types that you might want to use. So with this single field, so with this field, with this parameter testing field on both of these visuals, we can use the same different hierarchy breakout of having a dynamic um, and changing hierarchy view from a summarized visual perspective as well. And so again, if we still wanted to change that, so if we wanted to show, let's say we wanted to show client and vacancies on our um, ordering, we can again, we can see that now we've got our clients and then when we drill down, we'll drill down into that second level of vacancies, right? So even with different visuals other than just tables, these field parameters still work. So if you want to develop an entire report around being able to change out your visualizations, hierarchy and visualizations being displayed in a different um, way that different records or different fields are on top of the visualization rows or um, field parameters, you can easily do that with just having that field parameter being included on all of your different visuals. It's super cool. So now let's go through kind of how it can look on a real world scenario using it. So a similar view that we just saw at the beginning of the video, still just using this kind of breakout, but now this table, instead of having a bookmark to flip between the various different hierarchies that we might want to display on this table, we've got our field parameter. Let's switch this out for our new one that we created. We've got that field parameter that we created, right? So we're using that default field parameter that we've created, and we're able to do the same kind of hierarchy or uh, field switching that we were just walking through, right? So this table now is showing just a breakout by employee, right? Let's say we wanted to see the top level being of clients. We can easily just click on within our parameter slicer, we can click on that client selection, and then now we can see that the entire table has flipped to having the client on top. All of the conditional formatting of the table still remains the same. All of the other settings of the table still remain the same. All we did was just change the way the hierarchy is displaying on this table. And let's say we wanted to show the vacancy under that. We can then just click on that vacancy. And again, now we've got all of those different values just being broken out in that different hierarchical way. So when we filter for a specific vacancy, let's say, now we will then have our filters be applied so that it's including the client and it's including the vacancy, right? So again, it's just totally changing the hierarchy of those field visuals that you're able to filter on your reports by and totally change how your users can kind of get some better value as opposed to having a big dev lift on creating all these different bookmarks to give them these different views for exportable different breakouts. You can just create one field parameter through all the different fields you might need on there and then allow your users to determine what they want to see at that top level. So hopefully that helped with how you can use field parameters on building out your reports and improving them um, for user interaction. Let me know if you have any questions, any comments in the comment section, please. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.